Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the static routing JWeb Learning Byte. Okay, so here's our example. In this example, we have a few different things that I want to talk about. We have VSRX1, VSRX2, and VSRX3. Now, VSRX1 and VSRX2 are connected by one interface that you can see there. And then user one is connected to VSRX1, and there's a DMZ server connected to VSRX2. And then there is a server which we're calling remote server connected to VSRX3. Now, VSRX1 and VSRX3 are connected through the internet using an IPsec tunnel. So keep that in mind. We'll have to think about that as we create this static routing with JWeb. We want to configure VSRX1. Now, everything else as far as VSRX2 and VSRX3 has already been configured. So we're just focusing on VSRX1 here. And what we want to do is we want to ensure that we permit the user to communicate with hosts on the internet, the DMZ server, and the remote server. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface for VSRX1 and get this started. All right, so here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1. Let's go ahead and jump to network and then routing and then static routing. And you can see here that we have no static routes configured. So let's go ahead and start configuring these static routes. So first let's configure a static route that will allow the user to access hosts on the internet. So let's click the create button. And then here we can select a routing instance. There's no routing instance to select because we only have the main routing instance configured. And then we have the option to select IPv4 or IPv6. Here we're going to be working with IPv4, so no need to change that. And what we want to do here to allow internet access, we want to create a default route. Four zeros, and then subnet mask of all zeros as well. Then we want to click the Create button for the next hop section, and then add in the next hop. And here we can select an interface name if we choose, but that's only for point-to-point -point connections, such as an IPsec tunnel. So we'll show that in just a little bit. Click OK, click OK. All right, so we created our first route. We still need to create some other routes. We need to create a route to the DMZ server or that subnet for the DMZ server. Remember that the DMZ server is connected to VSRX2 and then VSRX1 is connected to VSRX2. So we need to create a static route for the DMZ server subnet that points towards VSRX2. So let's go ahead and click the Create button and then enter the routing information, 10.10.202.0. And then we need to enter the subnet mask. Now we can change or enter the subnet mask using dotted decimal notation. And we can set the prefix here, turn that up to 24. We could also just type 24 in as well. And then we hit the create button to create a next hop and then enter the next hop information and click OK. All right, now we need to create a route that points through that IPsec tunnel. Click the Create button again, and we need to enter that information for the remote server subnet, 10.10.203.0. And then again, we can set this to a slash 24. Then we add the next stop. Here, we're going to select the interface name. We need to select the ST0 interface, because that is the interface we're using for the IPsec tunnel. Click OK, and then we can click OK again. All right, so we're done configuring this. Let's go ahead and commit. All right, so the commit is complete. Let's go ahead and go to the monitor workspace and let's go to routing and then route information. Now we do have some other options under routing for RIP, OSPF, and BGP, but since we're working with static routes, we just wanna focus on the route table, which is shown under the route information workspace. Okay, so in this workspace, we're gonna see the route table. We can change the route table, but we're just worried about inet.0 here. So no need to change it. But we can see all the routes. And this is not a huge route table, but most route tables are a little bigger than this. So I'm going to show you how to do some filtering of this route table. So we can first filter on the actual destination address. We can filter on, let's say, 10.10.203.10. That's the address of the remote server. Let's click Search. 
and we can see the route that is shown is the 10.10.203.0 route. Next stop is ST0.0, protocol static, shows us some preference information as well as other information about the route. So let's find out, we want to go to 8.8.8.8. So that's just a host on the internet. We can see we're going to use that default route. And then let's go to the 10.10.202.10. That is the DMZ server. We can see where we're going with that. We can see the route, we can see the next hop. All right, so another option I wanna show is I want to show the exact route option. So if I select that and click search with just the DMZ server address, you see nothing shows up because it's looking for an exact match. So what we can do there is just change it to the actual exact match that we have in there. And you can see nothing showed up here. And the reason behind that is we do have to put the actual prefix mask on there as well. And here we can see the exact match for that route that goes towards the DMZ subnet. And so let me clear that. And then we can also search on protocol. Type in static, search. We see all of our static routes, the three static routes we configured. Change that to direct. Search again. And we see all the direct routes. Same idea, we do local. We see the local routes, perfect. So what we want to do now is we want to test connectivity. So let's go ahead and jump to a router that I have configured with multiple routing instances that will allow us to test the connectivity. All right, so here is this router that's split up into multiple routing instances. So let's first go ahead and attempt to ping a host on the internet. So the user's routing instance, fantastic. We can ping a host on the internet. That's exactly what we want to see. So let's attempt to ping the DMZ server. Perfect, we can reach the DMZ server. So let's ping the remote server that goes through that IPsec tunnel. Great, we can ping the remote server. One last thing, I want to ping the internet using the DMZ server. And again, works perfect, great. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure static routing using JWeb, and we demonstrated how to verify static routing using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.